good. And, and I know from the uh, tank, from the isolation tank, that it's a great way of absorbing magnesium through the Epsom salts. Oh, into your muscle? Yeah, hmm. through, your, through your skin, hmm. you know, because Epsom salts is so high in magnesium. Yeah, right. In the tank is a thousand pounds of Epsom salts in it. That's crazy. Does it make your skin like yeah. nice yeah, when nice you do it? <laughs> yeah, yeah, it just feels good too. But it's a, it, it feels really the tank. Have you done it yet? I did it once um, in San Francisco, and you can do it, it anytime you want if you want to come it here. It really, yeah. If you guys are I, ever it in town. I think it was really something wasn't right because I could feel like the temperature of the water was off, was off yeah. and. I, I did enjoy what I what I mean it was nice. So at first I got in and they had some music playing. Music. And then the music went away. Oh, to sort of relax you. At first, yeah. Um, but uh, I did. I was like sort of in my head a bit, you know, in that. But I didn't. But I kept feeling the water, and so I didn't feel like I was like sensory deprived. Of- Are you ever here other than like when you come down to do the podcast? Um, yeah, I do. I do. I'm coming back in November. Anytime you're here, just let me know in advance and we'll open it up. And this tank here is the best, the float lab, or if you want to go to the place in Venice, but the one you can do here is so easy and it's got a shower in there and everything. Yeah, that would be cool. And you can, I would like to try it again. Yeah. I mean, anytime. there are studies showing, you know, meditation and all that stuff is really important mm-hmm. for, I think it's an important, you know, one, one of the, you know, of many components in like healthy aging, healthy brain aging, lowering stress and stuff. Um, so I would definitely like to. I, f- I get out of that thing. I feel great. I'll, I'll come. Do you do down it frequently? Here. Still? Yeah, yeah, it's right here. You know, so I'll I'll come down here early in the morning and do it sometimes. How long do you have to stay in there to really? <sighs> I I like at least an hour, but I really like to do two hours. Two hours for me is a sweet spot. Mm-hmm. When I come out after two hours, I'm just like so chilled out, relaxed. Or... Yeah, and it's almost like during sober October. It's like cheating because you're basically getting high in there. Are you doing it during sober October? Yeah. Okay. I mean, it's not you're not taking in a drug, but you're so chilled out, you know. And you do have a weird psychedelic state that you achieve when you're. It's like a very extreme form of meditation in a lot of ways because of the fact that you're not feeling your body at all, and it's you're only experiencing whatever's going. On. It's like your brain detached from all the input of the body. Some of those some of those studies that have been done on like long term meditators or even just people that haven't meditated mm-hmm. and then they're put in like some like eight week <coughs> trial of meditation and how those like immediately all these changes in brain activity mm-hmm. start to happen yeah uh, like that are in, you know basically in line with good brain aging and improved you know all sorts of measure uh, measures of improved uh, cognitive function and stuff mm. it's super interesting yeah it would be really interesting to see like you know what how that differs from meditation is one thing i have a hard time with like i really it's well meditation in conjunction with the tank i think is really the key i, I think the tank allows you to achieve a state of physical your your physical body not being or not i i you don't ever completely eliminate the sensory input but you diminish it so significantly that that environment is not available anywhere else on earth where well, you're floating so you don't feel your body your water is the, the temperature of your skin. The air is the same temperature as the water. And you feel like you're just flying through infinity. You're in total darkness, total silence. Yeah, I didn't feel that way. I, <coughs> I, I mean, I did. It was a little relaxed, but I didn't feel like I was like flying through. Infinity. Yeah, they have cheaper tanks. That's that's part of the problem. Some of the tanks. I could are just feel not, the water the entire time. Yeah, it's probably either too cold or too hot. It should. Do you be, feel like your brain is like? Uh, in the now when you're doing it? Is that something? I feel like my brain is has way more resource, race, <clears throat> way more resources available to it. So like if we, you and I were having this conversation and we didn't have the headphones on and there was a jackhammer next to us, it would be really distracting. You'd want to get away from that jackhammer. Like, let's go talk over here. And so you'd want, you'd want to get away as far as you could. from. The, but everything is a distraction. Like these, the seat on my butt is a distraction. The shoes on my feet are something I'm thinking about. The watch on my hand. There's all these different things that are distracting you. But when you get in that tank, there's none of those things. You're You're just... You settle in, and once you settle in, you touch each side so that you can, you know, because you get in the water, there's like a few whip ripples and little little waves, and then you uh, touch each side so you calm everything down, and then I sink into the water, and then I take some deep breaths, and then I slowly bring my arms in the middle, and then I chill out. And I've done it so many times, my body goes, okay, here we go again. Like, it's not like, whoa, what is this? This is so weird. 
I've done it so many times that my body gets into that state very quickly. But if I take time off, and I do, sometimes I'll take weeks or even a month off, and then it's a little more weird at first. Like, oh, we're doing this again. Oh, I haven't done this in a while. But when I do it consistently on a regular basis, two, three times a week, then I could just sink right into it. I wonder if it would be any therapeutic benefit to people with like sensory gating disorders. Sensory gating disorders? Yeah, where, you know, in other words, like you were mentioning all the senses, all the sensory things that are happening, you know, there's auditory, there's smell, there's visual. I mean, these things are our brains inputting it at all times. I mean, there's mm-hmm. stuff going on, but we're able to kind of filter it out. And like you and I are having this conversation. Jamie's been sitting over the whole time and like, I really haven't paid much attention. To I right? pay attention but, to him. <laughs> but some people like particularly schizophrenic people with schizophrenia, they can't, they don't filter that out. And so right. like they get overload, like it's like an overload. It's called sensory mm-hmm. overload. And so they oftentimes like can't go into like a room with a lot of people. They want to like go often, you know, with, you know, by themselves or whatever. So I wonder if there is any sort of uh, benefit for like doing something like that where you're, where you're not, you know, the sensory inputs kind of like, if you could kind of train your brain a little bit. Mm. I don't know. I don't know. Um, I just, I find that for me, it it helps me think way clearer because I feel like I have more brain available to access. I feel like if you were trying to say something that was very, very complicated and you were trying to explain something that required a lot of the resources of your brain if there was a lot of noise around you you wouldn't be able to do it but if there's a lot of noise you're like you want to eat let's go eat and you're like some jackhammer yeah i'm hungry you want to eat yeah let's go eat like you could be able to communicate something very simple but if you were trying to explain the the various mechanisms of man i should really try this yeah because i think i because i go through like this i also sometimes use the sauna for that we're all like have something like prepared i used to actually before giving a presentation i would go in the sauna and i would go through it in my head mm. you know so it's like you know that was something that that i used to do a lot right um, because the sauna there's nothing in there just you yeah sitting there and it gives you that unusual environment of just silence it really helped yeah, yeah. so it's kind of interesting that you yeah. mentioned that with the that's flotation. a step toward but i think the the Float Tank is the ultimate. And right now, there's a really interesting podcast that's available. Um, I've, I've talked about this podcast before, Stuff to Blow Your Mind. They have a an episode right now, this week, that is about John Lilly, who is the psychedelic pioneer who created the uh, sensory deprivation tank. And he also is a pioneer in interspecies communication, figured out... Um, how to communicate with dolphins and did a bunch of weird psychedelic research with dolphins. There it is from the vault, John C. Lilly. He, a really amazing, amazing guy who, uh, uh, I mean, if you go back, they go deep into the history of his, his career too, which is just very varied, fucking really strange guy. But I think his, his great contribution is not just understanding the sentient nature of dolphins and how incredibly complex their language is and how smart they are, but also the sensory deprivation tank, which I, I think is it's one of the most underutilized tools for consciousness, for exploring consciousness and just for relaxation and for me for examining ideas. If I have an idea, mm-hmm. like I used to do, I used to do a lot of jujitsu in there. Like I would go into the tank and I would go over moves because when you're when you're completely out, I would I would drill moves in my head, like as if I was doing them. I would like clinch, hook, roll, tuck, grab, sink. I would do all these different things in my head. And practicing, yeah. Yeah, and th- I would allow I would do that to get me to this like relaxation state. And I, or I would go over a joke that I'm struggling with or a comedy bit. I'm like, what is a better way to say this? How's what's the best way to get this across? Now, I'm saying it this way, but it's uh, offensive or it's blunt and it's not the p- funny part. Like I'm, I'm, I'm taking a shortcut. Maybe I'd about, and then I would go over it in my head. And then eventually, once I would do that, I would get to this relaxation point where then I could just concentrate only on breathing. So after I've like worked out all the things that are bugging me, and sometimes it would be like a seminar on my life. I'd get in there, and then as soon as I close the tank door and lay down, I'd take a few deep breaths, and then I'd be like, okay, so here's what's wrong, fuckface. You're doing too much of this. Clean your goddamn office. You know, how come you uh, you only get eight out of ten things done on your to-do list? That's bothering you. You know, you need to spend an hour a day just doing this, and instead of 
drinking coffee and looking at your phone before you work out, just fucking work out. Just get in there and get your, you're wasting 20 minutes doing that. That 20 minutes, you could have been done 20 minutes earlier, and then you wouldn't have to rush over here to do the podcast. And, and it's like, it starts sort of giving me almost like a subconscious uh, renovation. You know, like just it's just sort of like, cause, okay, like this is this all this stuff in your subconscious is disturbing you, and here's why it's disturbing you, because you've got all this clutter. So let's clean this shit up, clean it up, get it together, and it's been responsible for I think a lot of my focus and discipline, like understanding the the significance of that focus and discipline, and it's not just like to be a tough guy or to just go out there and kick ass. It's it's more like to, to absolve yourself of brain clutter. That's pretty awesome, that introspection you're talking about. Yeah. I, mean, I think a lot of people could use more of that, including myself. I mean, it's certainly... I think all of us. I think all yeah. of us, really. Anyone listening to this. And I think there's probably one in San Diego. So if there's a tank place in San Diego, reach out to Dr. Rhonda Patrick. <laughs> and uh, I'm sure that there's a place you could use this down yeah. there that's near you. I mean, I certainly use other things like uh, extra running long runs. Sure. Do that. Do something similar. Get in that zone. In the zone. Yeah. yeah. Just sort of. But uh, what you're describing sounds kind of like next level. A lot of people get it from swimming as well. Swimming. Yeah. Because oh, okay. it's just like. Whoosh, kind of repetitive. Just, yeah, yeah. That repetitive thing. And then. You're sort of managing the motion of your body, and then once you get in, it's almost like a mantra. You're managing the motion of your body, and then the breathing, and then once you get it all synced up, if you're in good enough shape that it's not like a, a titanic struggle with every uh, every lap or every uh, stroke of your arms, you can get into this sort of meditative state that a lot of people achieve with running or, or even just like sitting there breathing, like a lot of people get that. Yeah, I have a difficult time doing that. but Yeah, uh, it's hard. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't it funny that it would be hard to sit still? It is. It is funny. Um, there's actually like the, the, some of the other interesting stuff is just doing that. Sit there, sit still and breathe. It changes like the the activation of enzymes and stuff like telomerase, the enzyme that rebuilds telomeres. Like, yeah. It literally a activates telomerase. So so fascinating how just like certain things like like I wouldn't imagine – Doing that would actually, you know, change telomerase. Yeah, the body's just this never-ending puzzle. It really is. And whenever I talk to you, I'm more and more sort of aware of that because there's so many different things and so many different mechanisms in, in terms of nutrition and nutritional absorption that I just, I'm so ignorant of. And so I hear all these things and I'm like, I'm trying to, th trying to get a map of the territory. I, and, yeah, I mean, also, there's so many things I'm ignorant of as yeah, well. <laughs> but I feel it's, like every time I talk, it's like someone's breaking out a little napkin and going, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then you take a right here and you go there and I go, all right. But it's not a real map. Like the, the map of the whole thing escapes me. It's too big. It it's is. It's too big it's, and it's too complex. And I'll listen to this podcast again. Like I'll listen to all the things you, you said again and I'll try to take notes maybe tomorrow or the next day. But then my stupid brain will like, uh, it'll like leak, half of it will leak out. It's like I'm trying to hold water in my fingers. It's like, I got it. I got some water. It's not <laughs> fucking dripping down my wrists. It's yeah. so hard. It's so hard to get a, a real understanding of this stuff.